Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to learn another set of Databricks interview questions and this video is part 20 in that. So let's proceed with the Databricks interview questions that are very important. But before moving ahead, I do recommend all of you to connect with me on LinkedIn as well as on Instagram and I'm going to leave the link in the description box. So let's move ahead with the first question. So again, this is one of the very important question and asked frequently, which is what is the difference between the distinct and drop duplicates? So if you guys already know the difference, do let me know in the comments, comment box uh, after pausing this particular video. Now, when you talk about distinct and drop duplicates, right, both are actually used to remove the duplicates in a data frame. Now, if you have data frame and you want to remove duplicates, you can go ahead use distinct and you also can use drop duplicates. Now, which to use when and what is the difference? So distinct does not accept any arguments, which means that you cannot select which column needs to be taken into account when dropping the duplicates. It basically takes everything that you, uh, it, it basically takes everything in a data frame. So the moment you say df dot distinct, it is going to take everything. All the, all the columns it is going to take and based on that, it is going to define your, based on that, it is going to drop your duplicates. Now, if you want to selectively drop duplicates using few columns, then in that case, you can say df dot select column one comma column two, you can define the columns in a list and then do the distinct. But eventually what will happen then is that you will not find other columns. So it will, it will select column one and column two only and it will do distinct on column one and column two of the data frame and it is going to remove column three, four, five, six, seven. So that is how the distinct actually works. I have already done it in the Databricks and I will show you as well. Now, in case you want to drop duplicates only over a subset of columns, but you would like to keep all the columns, right? Then you cannot use distinct. Then in that case, you will go ahead and use drop duplicates. Drop duplicates will drop the duplicates detected over the provided set of columns, but it will also return all the columns appearing in the original data frame. So this is what the difference is. Drop duplicates is basically more suitable when you want to drop duplicates over a selected subset of columns, but you also want to keep all the other columns as well. And inside drop duplicates, you can actually put in the list of columns based on which you want to uh, drop the duplicate. So basically drop dupl duplicates takes an argument. However, your uh, distinct does not take any argument. So now let's go back. And in fact, I will show you, you know, how the drop distinct and duplicate works. So basically here, I'm just creating a data frames to use first. Okay, so if you can see over here, this is nothing, but this is just a data frame. Let me simply run this particular cell as well. So I'm just running these two cells. Now you can see a data frame is created. Let me just display the data frame as well. Now you can see in this data frame, on this data frame, I'm going to use drop duplicates as well as distinct. Now this is a data frame. It has columns A, B, C, D, and E, right? So it has duplicates. So pretty much, you know, the last, these, three rows I have kept as duplicates. There are two duplicates. But now if you see, if I say df dot distinct, right? And I display the data frame one. Now let me just rerun the cell again to show you guys. So the moment I run this, you will see that the duplicates are removed. Instead of seven, you now only have five rows. So earlier you had seven rows. Now you have only five rows because it has removed the last three duplicates. It has only kept one row out of these three. Right. This is what uh, this is what your distinct has done right now in this distinct. I have this distinct actually applies on the complete data frame. So it is giving you complete columns as the output. Now, if I select only A and B, if I only select the first two columns, right, first two columns from here and then I do distinct and let me just run this cell. Then you will see that what has happened here one two and four. So only first three rows it has kept because rest all were true duplicates. So this is how exactly it works. But right now you can see only column A and B are selected. This is how distinct works. 
Now, if I talk about drop duplicates, now if I want to drop, let me just run the cell. So even if I want to drop duplicates based on column A and B in this case, right? Even in this case, it will fetch you three rows, but it is also going to fetch you C, D and E columns as well, right? This is the major difference between the drop duplicates and the distinct. I hope you understood this particular question and I'm going to proceed with the next question that we have is how to remove multiple columns in our data frame. So now this is also a common interview question. And if you already know the answer, again, I would suggest you guys to pause this video and put it in the comment section. So when you say how to remove multiple columns in a data frame, basically this is exactly how you do it. So you can do it using list comprehension. So if you guys have watched my Python playlist, there I have described about the Python list comprehensions as well because we use them very often in Python. So using the list comprehension, you can actually do this as well in a single go. If you have old columns and if you have new columns, then you can replace the old column names with the new ones. So basically, uh, if you see over here, I will show you uh, after uh, like running it in Databricks as well. So if you see old, right, column one and column two, these are the old columns. Then you have new. Column three and column four are the new columns, right? Now, if I say df dot select, then I'm what I'm saying. I'm saying old that take the old column, alias it with the new, right? Alias it, alias it with the new for old comma new in zip. I'm using zip function here for old comma new in zip of old and new. And this old and new is nothing but this list. So I'm getting a zip out of it. Now from that zip, I'm saying that replace my old column name with the new one, right? So select is basically helping you to choose a specific column and the list comprehension generates a list of expression, each renames an old column to a new one. So now let's go and see it in the Databricks. How does it work? So now if I come back over here, right? So let's say, this is your old, right? Basically you have, if you look at here, A, B, C, D, and E, these are the column names that we had. Now, if I'm saying that the old column names are A and B and the new is X and Y, right? If I'm saying that, and then I'm saying DF, which is my data frame dot select column old dot alias new, right? For old comma new in zip of old and new. The moment I do that, and I want to run this. So now the moment I run the cell and then I do the display and even for the display, if I want to run it, you will actually see that it gets renamed to X and Y. So like this, you can actually uh, rename multiple columns in our data frame. So I hope you like this particular video. You understood, you know, these two questions and after this, I do recommend all of you guys to practice, practice this in the Databricks as well. Now I will go ahead with the next question that I have. So when I talk about this, the next question is what is whole stage code gen in Spark, right? When I say what is whole stage code gen in Spark, I will actually show you. But this is, uh, again, one of the very conceptual questions that might get get asked in the interview. So whenever you talk about whole stage code gen, right, it is also known as whole stage Java code generation. Because basically it is nothing but it is a physical query optimization phase in Spark SQL that clubs multiple physical operations together to form a single Java function. So whole stage Java code generation right by the name itself what exactly it is doing it is generating a single java function right it takes in all your different operations right it takes in all your different operations and it creates a single java function now this whole stage java code generation it improves the execution performance by converting a query into an optimized function right so whatever queries that you are actually writing on the Spark, right? That, that you are actually writing on the Databricks, it is converting the, those query tree into an optimized function, which is nothing but a Java function that eliminates all the unnecessary calls and it leverages CPU registers for intermediate data. So basically it is 
optimizing it is creating an optimized function from your optimized java function from your sql queries right that you have put right in that way it, it is really very helpful as well and you can control it using spark.sql.codegen.whole stage config as well now if i go to um, you know let me just open one of the stages job over here so now if i click on view i will show you how code gen looks like so if you see over here in the dag visualization right so if you see over here you know parallelize map partitions map map partition and if you go over here this is whole stage code gen now if i click inside it it is again going to give you a detailed uh, dag visualization so if you can actually see this gives you a detailed level uh, you know whole stage code gen, code gen visualization on how it actually works so this is nothing but it is creating a java function out of your sql query which is very much optimized and it uses your cpus very efficiently so i hope you like this particular video you understood the concept and you liked you know this playlist that i have created specifically for the databricks interview questions because most of these interview questions are also you know uh, coming from you guys itself who have sent out emails to me you know that this question was asked so based on that i have segregated only those questions which are asked more often so i hope you like this particular video and thank you so much for being till here do remember to like share and subscribe as well as support my channel thank you so much for being till here